Now then, welcome to Smidge on Science with me, Smidge Monley. This week, we're looking at cars. We've all got one. We use them to get from A to B. But how does a liquid make them move? In the future, are they all going to hover? And are vans just baby lorries? All these puzzling questions and more will be answered soon. Join me and let's find out. are very complex machines and what happens under the bonnet is a mystery to most. Some say it's magic, perhaps science has an answer. To dig deeper what we need is someone who can explain it all. So I tracked down a bona fide expert and persuaded him to have a chat with me. Right, we're here with John. John, you own a car so you're perfectly placed to explain to us how they work. Well, I know a bit about it, not an awful lot. Brilliant, pop the bonnet, let's have a look. I did say I've only got about 10 minutes before work. Right, so we're here to look at the mysterious inner workings of the car, aren't we, John? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. what what does this bit do? Well, that's the battery that supplies electric right, power. Right, and that's a lovely pipe there, but what does that pink bit there do? I, I don't really know. It might be brake fluid, transmission right. fluid, What about that like blue that? bit with a flap on? Well, that's a windscreen washer. It's not really important. Look, what you're asking me is how does it work, right? Yeah. Well, it's a petrol combustion engine. You put right. petrol in a car, this burns it. So there's explosions going on in there. That doesn't seem very safe to me. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It, it produces explosions, the explosions drive the pistons, that's how you get motion. Right. I've got to work now. Not yet. So what you're saying is that combustion makes things move forward? Yes. Right, well that's all very simple, isn't it then? Oh yeah. Grand. Right, well we spoke to John and he was very knowledgeable about cars. He's told us it was the combustion of the fuel that makes a car move forward. Now we can't see that in a car because it's inside a car. But combustion's also what makes volcanoes exciting. So I've come to my laboratory with my safety goggles on to make a miniature volcano to show us how the principle works. Now in here we've got some warm water and I'm going to add a bit of red there to make it exciting looking. Okay, then what we're going to do is add some a little bit of washing up liquid. Now that's, that's taking forever, let's do it properly. So we add a little bit of washing up liquid like that and we give it a stir. Very nice. Now, we're going to add some baking powder and that gives us the combustion feeling. We're going to add that in, give it a swizz, like that, nice little swizz. And then we're going to add some ordinary vinegar and this should give us that experimental combustion. Oh, there it goes ladies and gents, there it goes. Now what we can see is combustion happening and you can see that rise and it's that that makes the car go forwards. But what we've got here is liquids making a volcano and not a car engine. So I think we can all draw our own conclusions from that, can't we? We've got to the bottom of the mechanics now. But I find myself looking at all these cars and wondering if we've missed something. Cars are changing all the time. So what does the future hold? I got in touch with someone, a chap on the other side of the world called Penelope, who's been busy designing the cars we'll drive in years to come, and I've asked him what it is we should be expecting. Right, so who are you then? Uh, hi there, Smidge. Uh, my name's Penelope Wang. Uh, Penelope? Penelope's a strange name. Penelope, yeah, with an M, that's right. Yeah, it's a male version of Penelope. Penelope, right, OK. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And what do you do? Uh, I'm a car designer. I'm a freelance car designer uh, down here in New Zealand. Um, I work up designs for uh, future prototypes, like the cars that you might get in uh, 10, 20 years time. Working right. with cars. You, you said you said you're in New Zealand there. Yeah. Now, it's only right. about eight o'clock in the morning here. So what time is it there? Uh, it's getting on for the evening now. It's about uh, seven o'clock in the evening here. We're a good right. very nearly. Right. So with ahead. with you being in New Zealand, which is, I suppose, technically in the future, does that help with you designing cars for the future? <laughs> I wish it did, Smidge, I really do. It's, uh, no, I mean, we're not far enough into the future to be able to see what's going to happen, you know. So, uh, no, I guess the best thing about it for me is that 
I'm completely out of sync with most of the car manufacturers in the rest of the world, so uh, when I'm trying to be hard at work here... Right, well, old, uh, earlier on, we old. spoke to a man called John, who were an expert in cars, but admittedly current cars, and he said, there's a lot of explosions going on inside there, which seems very dangerous to me. Do you think that's something we should be trying to get rid of? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, and, and that's, a, that's a big focus of car design at the moment. You'll find there's several new technologies coming out at the moment that are all about, uh, you know, they're all about changing the way that we propel our cars. There's uh, hydrogen fuel cells, there's electric drive, which is very big at the moment. Huge amount of the work I'm doing here these days is about developing prototypes for those going into the future. But I think you'll be seeing, you know, electric cars certainly coming co becoming commonplace. So when you get to these cars of the future... Are they still going to have wheels, or will they all fly? Uh, gosh, I'd love it if they did fly, but uh, no, everything I'm working on here still has uh, good old-fashioned wheels. I don't have a manufacturer yet that's come up with anything different. All oh, right, that's a shame. But what are these cars of the future going to look like, then? Will they all be silver, like in space films? Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. Uh, we're working with a lot of uh, flowing lines these days, a lot of organic shapes. Right. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of manufacturers who want some sort of retro stylings in there, sort of a back to the 50s thing with a couple of tail fins, I something see. like that. So what but, you're saying uh, is basically nothing's going to change. Well, it's been good to talk to you, Penelope. It's been very useful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, thanks. Cars. They're wonderful things and they're everywhere. They take us from A to B. We've learnt a lot about them, but I think the one thing we can take away is that they work a bit like volcanoes. I'm not sure that's a future I'm comfortable with. Imagine all these were tiny volcanoes ferrying people around. It doesn't seem like the sort of future I'd like for our children and our children's children. It's just not safe. Enjoying all this science? Well, if you'd like more science with Smidge Manly or any of the other stuff I make, then click one of these links and enjoy yourself.